Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Reflections. Ari, are we calling this Reflections? Is that what this is? I think so. We are reflecting. I think it's pretty We out. are reflecting. Yes. I think it's pretty out. Yes. Um, unfortunately, we have to move on from round opening round, and we have to talk about round one. But also, that's fortunate because we've got two killer memories to get through uh, in our reflections of the Richmond Football Club. Do you want to start? Should I start? Well, I actually don't know which game. I, I, have a, I think I have a good idea on which game you're going for. I, you started last week. I think, oh, should I start? I'll start this week. All right, you can start. Oh, you I'll can kick start. things off. I'll kick things off. And this might be a little bit of a little bit niche, a little bit more of a, a stranger memory, perhaps, because um, I feel like a lot of people, when they think of car enrichment, they think of a couple of games in, in recent memory. Of, of course, we actually haven't had, a, haven't had a decent record against Richmond over the last decade. But I'm actually going to take you back to 2012. And I'm going to take you back to the latter half of the season instead of round one, round 18, 2012. This was um, on a Saturday night in front of about 50,000 at the MCG. So um, I don't think we'll be seeing any, any, I don't think we'll be seeing many Carl Richmond games with only 50,000 at the G anymore. But um, Carl defeated Richmond 14, 11, 95 to 13, 13, 91. This was, of course, Brock McLean with. With I can't really, it would have, it would not have been long to long to go probably about ninety seconds to go um, from the from the pocket from the boundary over Levi Casbolt Ted who almost certainly gave away a free kick if we can all remember if we can all remember that um, yeah what are your before we before we kick things off what are your memories of the, of the game of the, the context in which you watched it if you did what, what what do you what do you remember of that game I was actually there and he oh, kicked it go. fifteen meters away from me. I was in oh, that perfect. exact spot. Um, my reserve seat back then was, uh, yeah, on that on the flank where the fifty meter line met the boundary line, and I was probably in. I think it was row C from memory, in the aisle, and I remember it happening. I remember us battling. Oh, Twenty twelve, man. Wow. Yeah, there's the a derailing. lot of there's a lot of. We've definitely got some notes down here about about that season, but um. Yeah, it was it was the probably the last good memory of that season because it started obviously white hot and I'm sure we'll get to touch on that a little bit um, once we rattle through these. But if we're going to go through the goals, Eddie kicked four that day, wow. um, so he was he was on fire. Murph, your boy, thirty six touches, got three Brownlow votes as well. Um, kicked the goal, obviously some other some other names. Brett Thorne kicked two. Dennis Armfield kicked two. Carazzo had twenty seven touches. So a bunch of the the. The typical kind of early twenty, early twenty tens, late two thousands kind of Carlton players on show. Um, while while we're on the topic of players, I want to play a little bit, maybe a little bit of a game of um of word association or name association. I'm just okay. gonna I'm just gonna spitball four names at you, and just tell me what the first things that come to your mind are. Okay, first one. I'm ready. Fraser Dale. Fraser Dale. He was a left footer. Was he? so okay well i, I don't know i don't, I, I don't know the, the, what, I once I'm again right. once again i don't know if, if anyone watched last week's episode but i would have been i was five at the time of the elimination final in 2009 i would have been nine um no actually that's a lie i would have been eight at this time so these players are beyond my uh are quite uh not in my time either fraser Dale, there you go marcus davies marcus davies he wore the number 43 there you go. He only played two games for Carlton, if my memory serves. Or was this one of them? I think it was. Ooh. I think it was. I, th I think it was. It was either him who played two games or another player I'm going to mention here. Um, third player, Andrew McGuinness. Yes, number 26. He did his he knee. He looked good early on. I, was I say, remember. He didn't he play, like, a, not a fair bit, but he wasn't, like, one of those two, three gamers, was he? No, from memory, he came on. Came into the side potentially after Jeremy Laidler got hurt. The chat will fix me up on that one. And I remember he looked he looked okay in his first showing for us. Played a bunch of games. Then he hurt his knee. And from memory, he just never really got going again. There you go. Um, and the last one, Andrew Collins. Andy Collins, number 16, came from Richmond. Yes, he did. That's well, yo, I don't even know these names, but you say it and it comes to me straight away. That's great away. knowledge. You got the numbers left foot off for, um, for Fraser Dale. There you go. The knowledge is there. 
You want to know a fun fact about Andy Collins? Go. I'm all ears. This is hilarious. Uh, I dated his ex-girlfriend. Wow. Yes. There you go. She was Small my... world. I dated this girl for three and a bit years from when I was 19. She was from Bendigo. Andy Collins was also from Bendigo. And I think they had like a little uh, childhood romance, not long. Um, so, you know, I remember when I first met him. Oh, my God, I'm so embarrassing. I think I was... I think I was 18 or 19 and I remember meeting him and telling him, oh, hey, I dated so-and-so. And I look back now and I'm like, oh my God, how embarrassing. Like just that, the, cr- the, the cringe, bro. That's poor chat. That's poor. <laughs> can you imagine know, him? Can you imagine being him? Like what's yeah. he supposed to say to that? <laughs> yeah, look, I, I know I'm not one to, to kind of judge what good or bad chat is, but even though I know that's, that's, that's not great. Um, <sighs> so yeah, those four names, I just thought they were quite funny if we could like discuss those. But um, obviously 2012 was the year where it all derailed a lot of the kind of Thoughts about that was partly due to the injuries. Um, and I went back and did some research. All four of those players didn't play in the in the previous fixture of that year in round one. We had actually 10 players who played in round one that did not play in that round 18 game. Um, wow. Players like Judd, Simo, and Waite all didn't play that round 18 game. So I'm sure we can kind of diverge into that kind of 2012 discussion. Um, was it is, it, is it a little bit flippant to just say it was injuries that kind of derailed that season was there something um, lurking under the waters that um was hidden in the first three rounds but um yeah the fact that 10 players we had te- technically 20 player changes um between those two games is pretty insane i think what it showed was less about the list and more about the club and the board slash administration and their ability to stick it out when things got tough. And I mean, I say that now that we've gone through, you know, 2023 and seeing what happened with the club there, but we were primed, you know, Judd Murphy Gibbs had done their, you know, apprenticeship in the league. I'm sorry, Murphy Gibbs Cruiser had done their apprenticeship in the league. Judd was there. Um, And, you know, we had, you know, held firm on our values with Fev and he was gone. And so we, you know, we were seemingly a new club who stood for something. And then, when push came to shove and we had injuries to our key players uh, and then the performances started dipping and we started losing games that we didn't want to lose, uh, you know, it was a bit too tough for the for the administration to just hold firm. And <clears throat> I don't know what the true story was beneath it all. What the, what were the relationships like? What was the trust like? What was the connection like? But yeah, it was so disappointing. We started that year 3-0, and beat Collingwood on that Friday night and then it ended in a train wreck, to be honest. Well, the, this this win actually put us nine and eight for the season. Mm. With four, four or five rounds to go, the season was definitely not over by any means. This game put us well and truly back within the finals hunt, but we couldn't unfortunately finish it off. Obviously, that loss to the Gold Coast, which has been well documented, um, especially after last year and then that game later on later on in the season. Um, obviously, you were far more cognizant of the whole situation at the time. I was just an eight-year-old, not really knowing any context behind it. I want you basically focus like what you do now without facial hair, right? Yeah, yeah, basically. Why do you think I keep it despite the thinness and the patchiness? Is because without this, I look 12. Hey, to and be I, fair, you can grow facial hair more than what I can. So I'll give you that. Yeah, it's probably like one of maybe two things I've got on you, if if we can. What's uh, the other? Being able to fit in small spaces. Uh, okay. <laughs> there you go. Thanks. Um, so, yeah, going moving to Brett Ratton and that whole situation, um, you're obviously far more cognizant of that whole situation and that whole context surrounding that than I was. I want to ask you, because I don't think we've actually ever had this discussion and I feel like it's a good time to have it considering the game we're talking about, but was there a point with the fan base when they turned on the coach or was it more of a bored thing? I remember the chatter being based around, oh, he doesn't have a plan B. Right. Just the usual chatter that you hear from fans about coaches because we have no fucking clue, let's be honest. We have zero yeah. clue how to coach a game of, of football at the top level. Um, but I remember the rhetoric being pretty strong about we're the Carlton Football Club and we're the best and we have standards and he's got no plan B and we need an experienced coach who's been there and done it and that was the lure to Mick and... It was the final move of old Carlton, in my opinion. It was the final time in our history where 
We just went for the, you know, grass is greener on the other side. Go get a guy who's seemingly better, uh, the, the malt house. And we almost did it with Clarko potentially um, just in recent times. But it was the it was one of those old school Carlton moves, you know, just yeah. don't trust in the process <laughs> and just, um, you know, be reactive. And, uh, you know, we just weren't willing to stick it out, you know? Yeah, because it felt like, looking back in retrospect, it felt like his first blip in his tenure or in his tenure when he was an established kind of coach. Obviously, we played finals the previous three years before then. Obviously, they didn't end how he would have liked it. 2011 was probably the, the best campaign out of the, out of the, out of the three. But mm. um, started the season so well, injuries came. I, was, I think we lost four in a row during the season and then it tailed off towards the end. Um what a how different things could have looked if we had stuck that. Hey, maybe maybe it was for the best. I mean, it's that butterfly effect. Hey, where maybe we're not in this position right now if we stick by him, or maybe we're in a worse or better position. You just don't know. The hardest part is the fans because we have no control. The club had to learn the lessons that it had to learn, and unfortunately for the fans, we just had to ride it out. Uh, everything changed when. I mean, Carazzo hurt his shoulder, collarbone against uh, the yes, Bombers. But every, honestly, everything changed when Murph ran in, when Hodge ran into Murph, broke his, um, his collarbone and shattered. Oh, sorry, Dangerfield, I should say, not Hodge. Dangerfield. Hodge was later on in, in the career. But it, everything, like literally everything changed. Because Murph was going into that year, he was like top five in the league. He midfielder. won the, f- Easily. He won the co- Coaches Award the year before, no? Or- year before, yeah, Coaches, Coaches Award. Coaches Award um, yeah. No doubt. So we had top line midfielders. You know, he and Judd were at the peak of their powers. Judd had just come off a Brownlow year. Gibbs was a really solid contributor. Cruiser was back after his his knee injuries. I mean, and the, for, the know, forward line, the makeshift forward line, in a sense, with like Garlet, Betts, Weight all firing as well. It was kind of like Collingwood now, and and Weight yeah. was our Maya check. You know, very similar. Very similar. Yeah, and then he had him humming. Like the team was humming early on. It they played with this intensity and this confidence, and then uh, it is what it is. You know, we're here. We're here now. We we are, we are, we're here now. I guess which is we what we can now. say. Do you remember that? Do you remember much of like that season? I mean, you said um, you were younger, but the the season I I remember like flashpoints of it. Yeah, um, I remember the first three rounds. Um, I, I remember the the round two game against Brisbane, which we spoke on briefly last episode, because the all and something I do remember is that the photo of Eddie Betts taking one of those marks was the basis of my tenth birthday cake. Very good. There that is go. exactly why this series was made. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> um, I remember the twenty twelve. If I'm not mistaken, the the Collingwood game fell on Friday the thirteenth. Mm-hmm. I think, and I remember it, it may have, or that might have been 2013. I'm it was. not quite sure. It was. The first game, round three, was Friday the 13th. I yes, remember the promo. Uh, yes, that's exactly the point I was going to make as well, the Channel 7 promo around it. Yep. Um, so I remember that. I remember the Gold Coast game, that whole debacle. Um, I, I was at the St Kilda game, the last game, born lies out. Um, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I did watch this game at my year's house, I think. I think. Nice. Um, and, yeah, scenes. Just scenes mm-hmm. when, when Brock McLean seals it. But, um, yeah, that's it for, for round uh-huh. 18, 2012. What, are, what do you have in store for us? That's you. So anybody in the chat, please add to that memory if you have a memory of that game. At the end, we're going to ask you to document another memory if you have another game. I'm really torn. I went into this video saying, yeah, we'll do the 2013 elimination final, but for whatever reason, I'm I'm a little bit more inclined to do round one, 22. Okay. Maybe it's just too soon though. Nah, it's too soon. You want you want to look back a little bit more. Let's do elimination final because I think you and I, you remember that, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, funnily enough, I think I remember the week before a little bit more. Maybe maybe it's actually I've watched the, the game against Port Adelaide back a little bit more than mm-hmm. the elimination final, but... I'm, I'm I'm full to knowledge, full to the brim with knowledge about that game. Don't you worry. Well, your game, 2012. You know, the following year, obviously, mix at the club. We definitely 
got the benefit of having a coach in the box who knew how to make moves on game day, no doubt about it, because he got that team to the finals. And I mean, it was a weird one because obviously the Bombers had had been suspended and yeah, we thought the season was over. Then they got suspended and then we had a chance to play. Then we're down by heaps to Port Adelaide. Then we, we beat Port Adelaide and then we're playing Richmond in that final. I remember I was 21, I think. And I remember my brother was 12 or 13, one of, whatever. And I just remember taking him to the game. There's a photo of the two of us. I've got like those typical wog sunnies that you get from the servo, like just it, rotten areas, new wave gel in the hair. Oh, it Ari. tracks. It all tracks. It Ari. all tracks. My God. Um, so I remember that. <laughs> that all tracks. Um, and I remember sitting in the bay to the right of the Richmond cheer squad. Right. And I remember the way Richmond started. And I just remember getting to halftime. It was all it was all Richmond. Good. I remember Cochin kicking a goal on the halftime siren potentially. And and then it was just like, well, well, we're not meant to be here anyway. Like, whatever. And then I think when Scotland kicks his goal, that's when I start believing and you know for many many years if you go even if you look on this channel prior to 2022 we'd been talking about this elimination final for it, so long and how loud it was when judd kicked that goal but it really was the loudest thing i'd ever heard yeah it, it was the 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 moment that oh the the generation after the 95 99 generation had to hang, to hang the hat on really like it was, mm -hmm. it was, it was the moment. I guess eleven was a better side, and eleven probably went obviously further in finals. But there wasn't that moment, I guess, because of how easily we beat Essendon in that first final. Um, there wasn't that moment to hang the hat on. Whereas when Judd kicks that goal, it's like si similar to the to the Black Acres moment in twenty two or in twenty three. Sorry, it's well, it's that moment. Well, we didn't. I mean, Judd was incredible for the club. And it wouldn't have made sense if we didn't get that moment with him because he gave us so much. And I think the the beautiful part about all of that, Judd never showed emotion. Um, yes. And the, after that goal, I mean, we were already endeared to him. We already loved him. I was obsessed with him. Uh, he just gave me hope as a supporter. And then to see his celebration for that goal, it, it it just added a layer of, oh, wow, he's really become a Carlton person now because you can't play for the club unless you have a passion for the game yeah. and for the club. Um, and, yeah, I still get chills thinking about it. You know, now that we're talking about it after winning finals, oh, it's still one of the greatest moments ever. Like, it really is. It yeah, really was. For sure. For sure. And I think, I think going back to the Judd thing, it's probably not like he's – it's not the best goal he's ever kicked. It's no. not. It's not the the best piece of play he's ever had. I mean, when I think of like prime, like Judd at Carl, and I think of that goal against Geelong, um, that one handed pick up and that left foot snap. Like that to me is like one of his kind of like highlights of his Carl career. But in terms of moment and like, I, I think sport can write Hollywood stories better than Hollywood can write Hollywood stories. And I think mm -hmm. that is almost the uh, like perfect summation of that i mean even dennis comedy on commentary says he puts the icing on the cake when if you look at the clock there's still 10 minutes to go we're only eight points up like it just felt like there's no way after that we're gonna lose like i don't care what the score is what the time is there, there is just no way um and even though how close it was and i mean vickery's goal was it no marriage's goal um which was just <laughs> insane one of the most overlooked and underrated goals yeah. that you'll yeah. ever see for for a bloke nearing on, if not over 200 centimetres to do that, is something extraordinary, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I guess if Richmond go on to win that game, that moment's probably looked on in a greater kind of, or in a more of a spotlight than the Judd moment. So it's that real kind of double-edged sword in a sense. But um, yeah, it, it's, where would you rank that in terms of, mo oh, I'm not talking games, I'm talking moments. Because um... obviously now there's competition. It's in my top five. For sure. Um, the, the reality for, for me anyway, um, and not just, just because I say this doesn't mean it's right, but the reality for me is 2013, no matter what we say or do, I think now that we've made finals on our own merit, 
no matter what we say or do, there was still a, a, a feeling of like, oh, we weren't meant to be there for me personally, just a little yeah. bit, which is probably what made the win stronger and better. Yeah, because that, Richmond, that's the point I was going to make, yeah. We had no Richmond. We had no right to be there. Us. Yeah, we had no right to be there, and that's what made us enjoy it a little bit more because it was it was an asterisk of a of a you know. Eight it was spot the sma- that we were given. It, it was the smash and grab. It was the kind of the typical like I want to say it's it's not it's not necessarily a Carlton thing, but it's that thing that you always want your club to do. It's that like thing that no one like you definitely don't deserve it, but you're just there, you grab it, and you leave. It's that that feeling. I, I just realized we got our taste of that feeling on the receiving end in 2022 when we lost to Collingwood, I believe, in in a in a roundabout way. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I I do understand that comparison. I believe all great teams, teams that become great teams, need like a an awful, devastating knockout blow. Uh, Geelong had it. Well, that Collingwood was Richmond. had it. Yeah, well, that Richmond was that, that was Richmond's first time in finals for a long time. Mm-hmm. That, and and they were they finished fifth that year. They were they were flying, and everyone was like, "Here we go, first time back in finals. They're going to put the foot down and and stamp their authority." And halfway through the third quarter, you're thinking 30, 32 points up. You're like, "Okay," and then what was it? Five goals in ten minutes, and yep. then back down. Nick Dygan rocks yep. up out of the stands. Well, no matter another story, team, yeah, and, or like another story from that game, which is just like, oh. yeah, yeah. Well, the one thing about that team, any team that we've watched in any generation, is they've all had the ability to play on energy and momentum because the crowd create that energy for them. No matter which team I've watched, we've all had the ability to kick six, seven, eight in a row, and you know, it's it's just been you know we've been battlers, but every now and again we. We used to put on pile on goals and we had momentum. So, uh, yeah, 2013. I, I love that it's becoming a distant memory now because of where the group is at now. Yeah, it, it got, it almost got to the point where it's like, okay, now we need to start. I say we. Now oh, it was a piss take. I mean, referring to it became a piss take. Like, how many times can I watch Jeff Garlett jumping over old mate and running to open goal? And- yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, 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 yeah, it did get to that point, and I think it was embarrassing. It was like, really? it was like Andy Collins. Hey, I dated the same girl. Area is embarrassing. <laughs> maybe for you, maybe that's your that's your like thing that you hang that you came to hear about. But um, yeah. you know, I, I yeah, maybe I think we're all happy that we're where we're at right now. Put it that way. Mm-hmm. I think we're all content that we have more things to hang our hat on rather than. Uh, ninth place finish. Yeah, ten years ago. Can't wait to do this in fifteen years and recount like when, when we're talking about you know twenty twenty three finals as being the distant memory. Like remember the first final we won with this group. Yeah, uh, uh, then twenty twenty four the the flag, and then twenty five the flag, and yeah, twenty six. Wow, well, you'll need to carry me, mate. You'll be hosting, and I'll be uh, I'll be yeah. a little bit older and a little bit more grayer by the time we're doing that. From the retirement home, maybe. Uh not quite. I'll be on a yacht. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Of Man, course. I'll be fifty. Relax. <laughs> yeah, a yacht, yacht. You reckon? Yeah. Where? Um, probably sailing through. Can I guess? Can I guess? Sure. Monaco. Um. Yeah. Sure. We'll go with Monaco. I don't mind that. Monaco's nice from all accounts. Yeah. 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 Wouldn't mind Monaco. That's that's pretty. Mm. Can I join you? Perhaps. Uh, no, you got to you got to be hosting this series in twenty years. Can I do it from got, the yacht? Surely, you if, if, if you're on a yacht, you can have Wi-Fi on the yacht. Surely. Uh, yeah, there'll be the best Wi-Fi on the yacht. But you, who says you're invited? <laughs> oh, no, I know. Oh, no, that's right. That's right. I'll um. You got to earn your it, way, it, mate. You don't just get an invite it, twenty years in advance. It's the yeah. It's the unsung heroes that don't get the that they get the You just you, you you guys just want it all handed to you. You don't want to work for it. You don't want it to be I, difficult. I, I'd argue you I've done the hard yards. Be, you just want it to be handed to you. I'd argue I've done the hard yards. Would so you? far. On on track. Would you? On track. You've done a couple of years of hard yards, mate. <laughs> I yeah, haven't well, even done the hard yards yet. What have you yeah, done? Well, I, I, I don't think I, I, I think I've started the hard yards at like ready to go. Like I'm I'm on track to having a good kind of 
a good couple of years of of hard yards under my belt. That's a very 2020, 2012, 2012 Carlton attitude. Oh yeah, you know, but I've worked hard for a couple of years, so like I deserve. I don't. I don't think I could have worked harder. Yeah, but it's got to be done for longer. Yeah, I think I'm on track. I think you are on track, but like, there's nothing. You know, we don't want to get too excited yet. You know. Yeah, I could run into um an Essendon player and break break my collarbone and. Yeah, life hits you, mate. Life hits you like life throws you curveballs. Life throws you curveballs like like well, Dangerfield I, ruining our season. It's a perfect metaphor. The 2012 mm. season is a perfect metaphor. It is. It's. It, you know why? Also, because it was just we. Were, I was in this mentality. And I don't know if other supporters were as well. Like, oh, we had done the hard yards because of the, the salary cap, and yeah, we'd done a rebuild and gone to the draft, and this was their time, and so to. It was very hard to. It was a hard pill to swallow. The the new reality, like oh my god, Murphy the golden child, your number one prize possession draft pick, has just you know shattered his collarbone and and that's him done. And it was just such such a hard pill to swallow because we all I, I felt that it was meant to be. It was written in the stars. Life's not fair. Hey, life ain't fair. Amen. Life and to live in the present. Mm. Yeah. There you go. So very good. Uh, all right, ladies and gents, time for you to add your reflections. Have a go. Uh, I would love, we would love to read through uh, some really obscure memories, whether it's from the 80s, 90s, 2000s, but just random reflections. The nature, uh, the better. Yeah, the more niche, the better, no doubt. And uh, yeah, Ari, thank you very much. And go Blues. Go Blues.